वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर मोनिका खेतर पर आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ एम एस सी फाइनल फिजिक्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द क्वान्टम थ्योरी ऑफ पैरा मैग्नेटिज्म इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द क्लासिकल थ्योरी ऑफ पैरा मैग्नेटिज्म इन द क्लासिकल थ्योरी वी हैव एज्यूम दैट मैग्नेटिक मूवमेंट ऑफ एटम्स they rotate freely but in this quantum theory the magnetic moments mu they are quantized hence we cannot have the arbitrary value of magnetic moment the magnetic moment mu is related to the angular momentum by relation mu is equal to minus j Minus g mu b j. Here we have mu b to be equal to Bohr magneton, and the value of Bohr magneton in SI unit is E h cross upon 2 m. G is termed as Linde g factor, and the value of Linde g factor when we are considering the angular momentum. due to electron spin only then the linde g factor is 2 and the linde g factor is 1 if we are considering the angular momentum j to be totally made up of orbital motion we know that j is l plus s so if we have l to be only the contribution is of l s has no contribution then g will be 1 similarly is the case for electron spin then g will be equal to 2 but in the mixed state that means when there are both type of contribution that is electron spin as well as orbital motion contribution then we have to find the value of g by an expression g equal to 1 plus j j plus 1 plus s multiplied by s plus 1 minus l l plus 1 divided by 2j j plus 1 here as i have stated s is the spin quantum number and capital l is the orbital quantum number now as we know the magnetic moment they tend to align themselves in the direction of applied magnetic field suppose we are taking the z direction then in this direction we will have the component of mu denoted by mu z to be equal to <coughs> minus g mu b mj what is mj here mj is the magnetic quantum number and its range is from minus j to plus j that means the value can have 2j plus 1 values now what we are going to find we are going to find the susceptibility of paramagnetic material in order to find the susceptibility we know we must know the value of magnetization m because chi equal to m upon h so we are finding the value of magnetization now in order to find the magnetization first of all i am writing the potential energy of dipole in the presence of magnetic field b we know that energy in presence of b is equal to minus mu b so substituting the value of mu which is in z direction and we know that value of mu in z direction is equal to minus g mu b mj so potential energy using mu comes out to be mj multiplied by g mu b multiplied by b now in order to find the m we are using the maxwell boltzmann distribution function we know that number of atoms which have a particular value 
of Mj in this Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution is proportional to the factor exponential raised to exponential minus e upon kBt. So, substituting the value of e, the factor will become e raised to the power minus mj g mu b d upon kBt. Now, the magnetization in the direction of field will be if I assume that there are total of n atoms in a unit volume of substance then magnetization will be the number multiplied by the average of magnetic moment component per atom. This is the number per unit volume and the average will be this is minus g mu b mj which is the value of mu and this is the Boltzmann factor. Similarly, in the denominator we have the Boltzmann factor. Now, in order to simplify this, I am considering two cases. Here we have exponential term. So, we will make expansion and on the basis of expansion, we have two cases. First of all, I am considering a situation in which we have normal flux density and the temperature is ordinary. That means the situation in which the factor in the exponential term g mu b mj b upon kBt is very much less than 1. So, we have on doing the expansion, we know that expansion of e raised to power minus x is 1 minus x plus x square upon factorial 2. Here I am taking only the first two terms. The first two terms of the expansion are 1 minus mj g mu b multiplied by b upon kBt. And the summation is from minus j to plus j. So, we have capital M to be equal to nj mu b and outside <coughs> within the bracket we have first term which is summation of minus mj and the second term is summation of mj square <coughs> g mu b b upon kBt. This is in the numerator and in the denominator we have Summation 1 minus mj g mu b multiplied by capital B upon kBt. Since the summation is from minus j to plus j. So, we will have summation of mj to be equal to 0. Because there are equal number of positive terms and negative terms. the summation of 1, it will be equal to 2j plus 1 and the summation of mj square will be equal to j, j plus 1, 2j plus 1 divided by 3. So, using all these factors, my m will become on simplifying to be equal to m equal to ng, ng square mu b square multiplied by b upon 3 kBt, j multiplied by j plus 1. Now, as we have to find the susceptibility, the susceptibility is m by h. We have determined the value of m in terms of b. Now, I am using the relation between b and h so that we have susceptibility as m upon b multiplied by mu 0 since b equal to mu 0 h. So, from this relation my susceptibility of paramagnetic material will be equal to <coughs> mu 0 and g square mu b square j j plus 1 upon 3 kBt. 
This is the susceptibility of paramagnetic material. Now, in order to express in a simplified view, I am defining a parameter P effective. This P effective is G root under root J J plus 1. This factor is termed as effective number of Bohr magneton. So, the susceptibility of paramagnetic material will be equal to mu 0 n mu b square p effective square upon 3 kbt. Here we have substituted mu b square p effective square to be equal to mu square. So, the paramagnetic susceptibility comes out to be mu 0 n mu square upon 3 kbt. This result is the same as we have derived in our earlier lecture for classical Langevin theory. Now, as I have taken the first case of ordinary temperature, now I am changing the case to be of low temperature and taking a strong magnetic field. In this condition, the factor mjg mu b multiplied by b upon kbt is very much greater than 1. So, the expansion of this exponential term, this is my exponential term, is not possible in this case. Now, I am using the value of m which is expressed in terms of Brillouin function. m is n g multiplied by j mu b into brillian function. This brillian function can be expressed as 2j plus 1 upon 2j cot hyperbolic 2j plus 1 upon 2j x minus 1 upon 2j cot hyperbolic x upon 2j. Here x is g j multiplied by mu b capital B upon kbt. Now, I am considering the two cases for this x. First of the case when we are considering when x is very much less than 1. Now, in this case the Brillouin function has a simplified form and it is equal to x j plus 1 upon 3j. Then in this case, the paramagnetic susceptibility will be chi which is m by h substituting the value of Brillouin function. Brillouin function is x j plus 1 upon 3j. Further putting the value of x which is equal to g j mu b b upon kbt. And on simplifying, I get my paramagnetic susceptibility to be n g square j mu b square mu 0 h j plus 1 upon 3 kbt into h. Here I have substituted b to be equal to mu 0 h. Further, we can express our paramagnetic susceptibility in terms of p effective which we have defined as g under root j j plus 1. So, paramagnetic susceptibility comes out to be mu 0 n p effective square mu b square upon 3 kbt. Taking the situation for x greater than 1. In this situation, my Brillouin function is equal to 1. So, substituting the Brillouin function as 1, my magnetization will come out to be Ng j mu b. That means, in this state, the magnetic dipoles, they get aligned along the direction of magnetic induction b. So, we have a situation in which quantum theory of paramagnetism 
reduces to the classical theory that is the Langevin theory in a special case when we have ordinary temperature that means the condition in which the factor g mu b m j b upon k b t is very much less than 1. Thanks a lot for watching.